Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean up a raster using the majority filter in ArcGIS Pro. So, uh, what do we mean by clean up? Uh, obviously, a raster is a grid of numeric values, and in this case, we have uh, some clusters of pixels. Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean up a raster using the majority filter in ArcGIS Pro. So uh, uh, one thing to know is this is typically done on a single band raster and typically on an integer data, not on floating point data. A good example of this is uh, a classified image where each pixel has been classified into a class and those classes are represented by numeric values um, that are very specific integer values. So in this example, we've got a raster that has values like 0, 5, minus 3. And so, uh, particularly in a, in a post-classification setting, um, it may be that these uh, values represent user classes, like all of these number 4s are grass, all of these number 5s are supposed to be forest. And it may be that you have outlying pixels that don't belong, to, that, that have been misclassified, for example. So imagine this zero pixel. It's sitting all by itself. It's isolated. Uh, it's not connected to any other zero pixels. So maybe it was meant to be a seven. And we essentially want to go through and reclassify these isolated pixels. So that's exactly what the majority filter does. Uh, this uses a moving window, which we've discussed in previous videos. Uh, in this case, it is always a 3x3 three three square window. It moves across the original raster or the input raster, centers up on each pixel in turn, and does a computation to determine whether this center pixel should be reclassified. And in this example, the computation it does is that it uh, looks around at the neighboring pixels and determines uh, what value makes up either more than half of these neighboring pixels or the majority of the neighboring pixels. And we can set that. And so uh, it's also important to think, what do we mean by neighboring pixels? There's two settings. In one setting, we can choose to use uh, just the four immediately adjacent pixels. Uh, and so you'll be considering what is the majority or greater than half of these four pixels. In the other setting, you can choose to use all eight neighboring pixels. One other constraint is in addition to considering the numeric values, it also considers the connectivity of the pixels. So uh, for example, let's say we're looking at the, the four adjacent pixels. In order for, and seven is obviously the majority, but in order for that to be a valid majority, they have to be connected at the corners. They have to be contiguous. If they are not connected, then they don't actually add up as a majority. Um, if you're using the four, near, the four adjacent, contiguous is defined as being connected at the corners. If you're using the eight adjacent, contiguous is defined as sharing a boundary. So those are the constraints. You can see in this example, uh, this pixel was ultimately reclassed as 7 because the majority of its neighbors had a value of 7. Okay, so it's very easy to go do this in ArcGIS Pro, and we have a project all set up. We have recently classified an image of the Crown Point State Historic Site in New York. Uh, we have six classes, water, rock, grass, forest, scrub, and wetland. And you can see this went pretty well, but it's not perfect. And why don't we in particular zoom into an area that looks patchy? And a good example could be over here. So if we look at this image in our uh, true color, we can see this is basically a big grassy lawn right here. And if we turn on our classified image, 
we can see that uh, most of it is classified as grass in this teal blue, but uh, some of these pixels are classified as wetland in this kind of darker green. So we'd love to remove these isolated wetland pixels. And this is a perfect job for the majority filter. So let's go ahead and run this filter. Uh, we're we're going to find the tool by going to analysis and then the toolbox. We'll search for majority up here in geoprocessing and we'll open up our majority filter. Our input raster is obviously going to be the uh, classified image that we're looking at and we will go ahead and save this. We're going to attempt to save it into a folder, not a geodatabase. I'm going to put it into my output folder and I'm going to call it uh, kind of the same root name that I used before, but with the majority at the end. And I'm going to try a .tiff extension. And I think I'm going to use the eight nearest neighbor. And I think we'll go with majority rather than half, which I think is a little bit more aggressive. All right, so we'll hit run. And this may take a second. OK, so that finished successfully. And notice the difference. A lot of those isolated wetland pixels that were sitting out in our grass are now gone. Notice a larger clump. The larger clumps of those wetland pixels did survive but the smaller pixels are gone. This output is a little, little confusing because it has changed the symbology. So what, you know, the grass that was assigned to teal has now been assigned to this reddish orange color. Also notice in the new output file, um, the symbology is now displayed as numeric values instead of the original text class names. So I'm gonna go right click on uh, the file, go to symbology, and keep in mind we can come in here and put in any labels we want. So we'll call that water, call this rock. I'll pause. Okay, so I've now uh, redone the text labels, and I'll just close that, and you can see that these are now uh, labeled properly. Thanks.